I've been teaching natural history maybe 50 years or so professionally. I um, founded a school back in 73 with friends. We took people out camping and environmental educational experiences in wilderness areas. And we said that the main requirement was to have a cheerful acceptance of the little surprises nature holds in store for you. Look at that, isn't that great? This is a great, great plant right here. But look, isn't this beautiful? Oh, cool. This is a, cause this, see that little beetle? So cool. That's interesting. You ought to try one. John Crawford, some people call him crawfish. I like to call him crawdaddy. He's been on adventures all over the world and he's put himself in all kinds of interesting situations and whatnot. But John could have just as much an adventure going on some epic journey as he could taking a, you know, 50 foot walk in the woods. He finds all the kind of interesting things that are happening wherever he is, and he's got a real sense for that. Most people, when you talk about nature, especially if you talk about snakes, okay, uh, they know crawfish. Most people just call him crawfish, they don't even call him John. Um, I've been traveling abroad in Norway, I was traveling, and I told them where I was from, and they said, oh, you must know that guy crawfish. Naturalists play an important role in any organization that they're associated with. You can have all the knowledge in the world, but if you can't convey it, if you can't impart it to other people, then what's the point in having it? Uh, anyway, but this is uh, yucca, got a lot of strong fibers. They have a very sharp tip, and you can make a needle and thread, which I have used to uh, repair clothes, to scrape, just scrape off the green pulp. Um, yeah, that's cord. That's very, very strong cord with a needle attached. There you go. <laughs> Anyone need a thread? Crawfish can talk about climate and weather. He can talk about the geology of the coastal margins. He can talk about the geography, where we are in place and how that changes through time. He can talk about the animals and the plants and the ecology of how they are interrelated in this environment. He can do it with the common names for, for younger students and he knows all the scientific names. Trust me on this. You can't name something that he does not know about. So this plant, this is called Fluchia purpurea. It's also called stinkweed and it has a pretty pinkish flower. Here, you try it. The game that I like to play with some of our um, older visitors is, all right, John is going to basically ask you to comb the beach and you find an object, just bring it back to him and he will tell you about it. And the goal has always been stump John Crawford. That, that's the challenge. You know, nature, it's all, the closer you look at it, the more interesting it becomes. And I think sometimes there has been sort of a miss focus sometime in nature because a lot of times you know a lot of nature shows will show the great barrier reef or the you know tropical rainforest i mean i love tropical forests you know in the central america stuff in the backyard of the kids in atlanta is just as exciting well first of all he is so enthusiastic about everything look, look an eagle an eagle bald eagle cool and he'll be in the middle of a sentence and he'll spy something and then he'll change direction and tell you about something new. And because of that, you know, you could go on a walk for him every day for the rest of your life and you'd still continue to keep learning new things. John and I met aboard the USS Simon Lake in 1970. We were both in the Navy and worked in the same shop and hit it off pretty much right, right from the get-go. Trips we would take down to, the, to Florida to go to the Bahamas, we would generally leave Savannah late in the afternoon, so we'd be traveling down 95 at 60, 70 miles an hour in a van, and he would do roadkill identifications of, of snakes on the side of 95 at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> the species. <laughs> He's always been a naturalist, I think from the time he was a child. And, uh, you know, at one time he had 47 snakes in, in cages in his bedroom. Now, this was a credit to his parents that they allowed him to have the 47 snakes in the bedroom, right? Well, he always continued to have snakes, you know, throughout. I would honestly say he is one of the best naturalists I have ever, ever worked with in my life. People talk a lot, but when it comes down to, to it, um, uh, 
you know, their actions speak louder than their words. And so he's someone who's been consistently involved in our program for over 40 years. Um, I actually have a quote from him that, that we pulled off of um, one of the, uh, a letter that he sent to the DNR back in 1981 in regard to, to strandings. And he had just gotten to Little St. Simons after doing work on, um, on Wausau Island with the Credit Research Project. And uh, they were monitoring strandings. And so he, in this letter, he says, I've strained your eyes long enough. I look forward to meeting you and working on the carcass data. I don't imagine anyone can claim to enjoy recording the deaths of such fine creatures as Coretta and Kin, but hopefully our work won't be in vain and maybe we'll be rewarded with an increased awareness of their plight and new regulations to save them. So that was um, 41 years ago and he's still active in sea turtle conservation. He's one of the people that's directly responsible for um, the, the recovery period for loggerheads we're in now. There's not many people like that around, but, but he's certainly one of those unique individuals that really is sort of the Georgia coast. Uh, there's a little superstition I heard growing up here as a kid, and that is if a, it had to do with these terrapins, and they said if a terrapin bites you, it won't let go until it thunders. When you think about how many people he's come into contact with over the years, and particularly at points in their career where they're hungry for information and they're influenced, um, by mentorship like what he can provide, the scale at which um, his impact is escalated is, is really substantial. So, you know, one intern gets to work with him perhaps for a year, but that intern goes on to teach in a classroom and influence hundreds of others and eventually worked her way into uh, a different organization within UGA that, that um, impacts hundreds of thousands of youth. and. And when you think, kind of go back in time and you think about those pieces of influence that he had and what you can learn from powerful educators like John, he, I, I don't know that we'll ever know how wide his impact is. I think we've got to learn to live with animals that live around us, uh, learn about them. Uh, part of that is appreciating all wildlife um, and learning about it as much as we can and realizing that you know, we can coexist uh, with them and they enrich our lives. Uh, they increase our knowledge. Um, they just make the world a better place, so. <laughs> One of my favorite uh, stories is that, um, you know, we used to lead trips together for Wilderness Southeast. And there was a third grader that uh, came on one of our trips. And later on, I came across her father. And her father happened to recognize my name and Crawfish's name in something. I don't remember what it was exactly. And he said, oh my goodness. He said, I want you to know that that little third grader that you all had on your trip, she's now in law school to become an environmental lawyer. And I was like, well, those are the kind of things that you don't often get to hear about, but we happen to hear, it's giving me goosebumps right now to remember that. Well, it's, you know, it's important for young people to have mentors and heroes and um, people they can aspire to be, not only in their profession, but as their, you know, as a human. And John is that for me and for so many other people. Crawfish has impacted and inspired so many people. Two people that he had a significant impact on were Tom and Ruth McMullen. Ruth's been a volunteer with us for 23 years. During that time, she's watched John's inspirational style of teaching draw thousands of people in and engage them with science and their environment in a way they never had before. It drew Ruth in as well and inspired her. And I can't think of a better time than now to announce a very special estate gift has been made by Tom and Ruth McMullen to endow a faculty position in honor of John establishing the John Crawfish Crawford Public Service and Outreach Faculty Fellow at UGA Marine Extension and Georgia Sea Grant. This gift will ensure that John's legacy will continue well into the future and there will always be somebody like John with us to carry on the inspiring experiential education that he started here 30 years ago. We wanted to make sure there was always someone like John around and we wanted to make sure that more than just John, that his values and his methodology would continue to be, to infect other people. And I started thinking, well, 
we are, we are fortunate enough to have assets that can do something good in the world. I need to think about what's really important to us. So um, a couple of things came to mind and top of mind was this place, these people, and John. And we decided um, something that will live in perpetuity is really important. And, and I can't tell you how happy that made us. The gift that has been given in John's honor will allow us to be sure that those environmental education, those basic out in nature learning experiences continue um, as a part of this facility. Well, look, wood storks, look at that. Wow. Wow. That's the kind of thing that gets kids excited when you see something like that. Isn't that amazing? Look at those. I guess that's about all our time from here.